<laughs> Finally, I'm here. Hello yogis, namaste. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to lead you through a morning stretch routine to get your day energized and your body open and limber and ready to go to accomplish whatever you need to today. So we will begin in a seated position. Legs crossed any way you want. I like to do a half lotus pose, but um, you could just do regular crisscross applesauce or just whatever you like. We're going to take this time to center ourselves. Really feel your tailbone pull down to the earth as you pull your belly in. Your shoulders are moving up, back, and down. So you can have a long, proud spine. Again, pulling the belly button in towards your spinal cord and up towards your heart. Activating that inner core, that muscle that really leads you throughout the day. It, it holds you up when you're standing, when you're sitting. It's important to keep it active and flowing and moving. If you haven't already, please take this time to close your eyes. Hands can either come and rest, palms facing up on your knees. Maybe you're going into a chin mudra, which is your index finger um, going into the thumb creases, or maybe you just keep your palms open, accepting and um, being open to the blessings of this new day, this new morning, or if it's nighttime for you, the nighttime. All time that we have alive is a blessing. So take this time to really observe yourself. What muscles are you holding tense right now? Is it in your shoulders? Is it in your cheeks? Is it in your lips? Maybe the muscles around your eyes? Is it your legs? Are you trying to hold yourself in one position very tightly? If so, please let it go. But keep your sitting muscles active, meaning your core and your um, lower back. Chin parallel to the floor. We'll take this time to take a deep breath in and out through the mouth. Feel that cleansing, purifying breath in and out through the mouth. Bring your hands to your heart and we're going to bring them up like you're growing a tree all the way up. Just feel the stretch of your core, maybe it's stretching your chest out a little bit. Feel the subtle change, maybe it's in your armpits or the back of your arms. While you're here, try to keep your shoulders down. Even though you're bringing your arms up, you want to try to bring this area down, making room for your ears so we can listen to our bodies. And now bring that right hand down and you're going to walk the fingertips over, over, over. There is no limits. Just keep going until you feel a nice stretch in your side. Open up the chest on that left side. And breathe. Take one more deep breath. And now lower that left hand as you raise the right hand up and over your ear as you stretch the other side. Now you want to try to keep your right sit bones attached to the floor so you could feel a nice stretch on the side. Still pulling that core in, still pushing those shoulders down, making space for the ears. If you can, try to look over and up. And take one more breath. Hmm. bring the hand all the way back down, uncross the legs, and now we're going to stand up and begin, oh, you can only see a little bit, well, most of my body. I'm a one-woman crew right now, but maybe one day I'll have a good studio and I can share a better frame with you, but for now, we're just going to work with this. 
So we will begin here in standing with your feet slightly apart, just about the, the width of your hips. And we're going to begin here in mountain pose. This is mountain pose. Oh my gosh, you can only see a little bit of me. Okay, this is mountain pose. So from here, if you're switching your weight back and forth, feel the center of gravity here. If you go to the left, try to keep your right foot rooted. If you go to the right, try to keep your left foot rooted. Shift your weight from the front to the back. See which muscles are engaging. You're going to raise your arms up, all the way up. Go for a little back bend here. So tilt the head back slightly. And exhale, fold forward. Now you're not pulling or, you know, go to the side. So you're not going to pull anything. You're not really forcing anything. You're merely just folding forward. If you find that the strain is causing you to furrow your eyebrows or get tense in the jaws, try to soften here. We're softening into the poses, just opening up the body. The one thing that you should prioritize in your forward bends is this area of your lower back. So if you need to, you can bend your knees if you're, not, if you're a little tight in the hamstrings, but you need to keep this lower back straight. Imagine you have a block on your back. Try to keep it straight and holding up the block as you bend forward. A lot of times people will try to keep their legs straight, but lock their legs and then bend over. That's not what we want. We want the back to stay long and bring a little bend in the knees if you have to. If you don't touch the floor, that's okay. So we'll just hold here for a little bit, relax the neck now, and just feel the muscles slowly opening up. On an inhale, you're gonna rise up, bring the arms all the way up. Maybe you cactus the arms, opening up the chest for another back bend. Open up the heart. Now when you're in this back bend, you don't want to push your butt up. You kind of want to scoop it in a little bit. There you go. And now lower the hands. Straight and neutral back. We're going to take that up for one more. Up, maybe back bend, tucking the tailbone in. Cactus arms. And Exhale, fold forward, reach forward. Now from here, you can play with your legs a little bit. Maybe you bend your left knee and then your right, opening up the hamstrings. Remember that belly is still pulling in. Hmm, feel the breath, that yummy, energizing breath. If you want to hold ragdoll here, you can just keep your arms straight. My hands touch the floor, so I prefer to just hold my elbows. Stay here for one more breath. Now you're going to walk your hands forward just to the front of the mat. And now walk your hands back until you come into a plank with your wrists right underneath your elbows, your shoulders right over your wrists. Make sure you're not poking your tailbone up like this, but try to tuck it in using the strength of your core. And your elbows should not be locked. They should just be slightly bent. Now when you're ready, bend the elbows. Bend, slow, slow, slow. Right here where the elbows are hugging the rib cage is where you should end for your chaturanga. Lower all the way down, untuck the toes, and open up for cobra. Even here in cobra, in all of your back bends, you should be trying to tuck the tailbone under as if you're trying to scoop the pelvis forward. You can't really see it in this position, but you can feel that motion and that helps protect your lower back. So make sure that you're tightening your tushy cheeks. 
pushing that pelvis forward when you're going into your back bend. It allows for a more open, long spine. Lower back down, bending the elbows, we're coming into a baby cobra. And then all the way down. Retuck the toes, and you're going to push back up with the power of your arms, chaturanga, and come back into plank. Lower the knees now, and shift your weight back so your tush goes all the way to your heels for a child's pose. Feel that lower back passively opening. If you want a little bit more for your shoulders and your chest, you can come onto your fingertips like a cup and lower down. Your knees are slightly apart, but not super wide, just enough for your chest to fit through. Breathe here, take an inhale. And exhale. Now we're going to come back up onto tabletop. We're going to do a couple cat cows. So on an inhale, you're going to drop your belly button, poke the tailbone up a little bit, and open up the heart just a bit. So you don't want to exaggerate and open up all the way but just enough where you feel a nice curve in your back. And on an exhale, you're going to suck it in like you're trying to take family photos and pull the spine up. Imagine you're pushing away with your hands and pulling that upper back up also. Your tailbone will be dropping toward your feet. Inhale here. And exhale, going into cat. Inhale, cow pose. And exhale, cat. Tuck the tailbone under as you're going into your cat. And straighten the legs for coming into downward facing dog. Downward dog is a very important foundational posture. So while you're in downward dog, I'm going to look at you guys so you can see me, but make sure you are staying in downward dog listening to my cues. You're going to try as much as possible to push your heels back, but if your heels don't touch the floor, you don't have very open hamstrings, then you can stay on your toes. Maybe you bend your knees a little bit. Again, we're prioritizing that back. So if you can't touch the floor and you find yourself rounding out, just go ahead and bend your knees here. You want to try to create a straight line from your fingertips, more like your finger knuckles, all the way up to your tailbone. So if that's not possible with straight legs or with feet all the way on the floor, go ahead and bend your knees. It's okay to modify. Here you're... Uh, your armpits should be spiraling towards your ears. Again, try to loosen up those shoulders. Try to make space for the ears. And your weight should be extending past the palms, past the heels of your hand, and into the knuckles and fingertips. Pull the belly in and up, and also make sure your rib cage is not poking out, but controlled and in. Try to draw the lower ribs together like you're uh, lacing up a corset. And a tiny micro cue that I like to think about when I'm in downward facing dog is, so you're not going to really move anything, but if your feet are flat on the floor, imagine your legs kind of outwardly rotating. But you're not moving really anything, it's just the femur is going to externally rotate just a bit. You could feel a little bit more activation in the inner thigh here and in the quadricep. Perfect. So now you're going to walk your hands back for another forward fold. Rise all the way up vertebrae by vertebrae. And bring the feet closer together. 
You're going to raise the arms all the way up, inhale. And exhale, swan dive, make sure not to hit anything. Swan dive all the way down, walking the hands back toward the front. This time you're going to take your right leg here and step it forward. Lower that left heel down and make sure your hips are straight forward as you rise up into a warrior one. Hold here, make sure the tailbone is heavy. Some of you might open up to the side. Try to move forward. And you can feel a nice stretch in the hip flexor if you are trying to square your hips properly. Make sure you're tucking your tailbone under. We'll hold here for five more breaths. Relax the shoulders. Proud chest. And now you're going to lower your hands and lift the back heel and move your foot a little bit closer as you straighten out that right leg. If you need to take a block here, it would be good for uh, those who have tight hamstrings. But try to keep your hips square still. So you're pushing your right hip back a little bit more, still activating the core. And you can either stay up here feeling the nice stretch along the back of your right leg, or maybe you come a little bit lower. Again, leading with the belly button and then the chest and then lowering the neck. We'll stay here for a couple more. On an inhale, look ahead of you. You're gonna walk your fingertips forward a little bit, coming onto the tippy toes on your back leg. You can stay here and feel all of your weight on your straight leg um, in the front, or you can try to lift that back leg up, coming in for warrior three. And now you're firing up that right leg, keeping the balance. Maybe you bring your hands back for airplane. Stay here for one more breath. Now bend that right knee very, very gently. Lower that back foot, coming back up again into warrior one. And exhale, bring the hands down, step that right foot back. Bend the arms for Chaturanga, lower all the way down, untuck the toes, inhale, come up into Cobra, remember to tuck the tailbone in to avoid compression in the lower back. Now you're going to tuck, uh, tuck the toes as you bend the knees, either come into tabletop and then downward dog or just go straight into your downward dog. Now you're going to bring your left foot forward for warrior one. Make sure that right foot is out about, say, 45 degrees, bending that left leg. Try to oppose the opening on that right side by tucking that tailbone back down. Try to, tuck, uh, try to push the left hit back a little bit more to square the hips, square the shoulders, release, relax the shoulders here as the arms come up, brow, chest, and pull the belly in. You are a warrior, you are strong, you are ready to handle the day. You're ready to cross off all those things on your to-do list. Take one more breath. And exhale. And now you're going to come up on the back toes. Straighten that front leg. Maybe you come down, touch the floor. Maybe you use a block. I have a block right here. Maybe you use a block to hold yourself up. 
want to make sure you feel the elongation in the hamstring on the left side. You can either stay here or maybe you lower a little bit more. Remember, we're leading with the belly button in all our forward folds. Oh, you can also release that back heel if you want. Your foot is going to be going slightly outward, but remember your hips are straight forward and square. The belly button is still pulled in. Crown of the head reaches forward, spine long. Hold that stretch. Mm. I just love stretching so much. It's like, there's no other way I could put it other than a good stretching session just feels yummy, like delicious to my body. It's such a nice treat. <laughs> On an inhale, you're going to come back up onto the toes of the back foot. Walk the hands forward and you can either draw your foot closer and feel the weight shift over that left hip of the left foot. Or you can raise your right leg if this is okay with you keeping the hip square, meaning you're keeping your right hip down, flexing that right foot. You can raise the arms, try to create a long strong line. Either keep the arms framing your ears or you can bring your hands back for airplane. Remember not to lock your, uh, your supporting leg, your left leg here. Try to give it a little bend. We don't want to overextend the joints. Slowly, slowly lower that right foot down, raise the arms up. Warrior one. And now lower the hands back down. Lower that, or step that left foot back. Chaturanga. Lower all the way down to the floor. Untuck the toes and tuck the tailbone in as you rise up for Cobra. We're not aiming to straighten the arms really because you want to keep your shoulders back. We're aiming to have a long round spine, round as an arch, opening up the heart. And you're going to shift your tailbone back now into a very short child's pose. Hmm, bending the legs feels so good after stretching them out. Now you're going to come back up and we will come into a seated, oh. Now come back up into tabletop and then downward facing dog. Walk the hands all the way back and stay at the back of the mat. I'm going to come to the middle so you can see. Now in this forward fold, you're going to heel toe your feet out a little bit more, maybe like a little, how about a foot's distance out from your hip width. And now you're going to lower the hips, point the toes a little bit outward. And if you can, open up the knees with your elbows as you come into a yogic squat. Really good for opening up the hips, getting those internal organs, massage, ready to move. Lower the hands, you're gonna straighten your legs to reset. And then lower the hips again, come back into yogic squat. We're gonna do that one more time. Lower the hands, straighten the legs and come back down again to yogic squat. Remember your hips might not come this low. For some people it is, you can come out this far or you know, maybe you just stay here, but make sure you're just keeping the direction of your knees outward and open. Now you're gonna lower your butt all the way down into seated with the legs straight out in front of you. You're going to take your right leg, open it up to the side. 
Now the heel of your right foot is going to come into the inner groin of your right thigh and the, uh, what do you call it? the balls of your toes is going to go into the left inner thigh. What we're going to do here is open up to the right side first with that right knee out at 90 degrees and then you're going to take that right arm, make sure you're pulling your belly in, take that right arm and swing it around reaching for that left foot. So you're elongating that right side, starting from the lower back all the way to the armpit. If you want a little bit more, you can reach for the outside of your left foot and maybe come in for a twist. I like to hold it right here. Remember, if your hamstring is a little tight, you can stay up here. You can grab a block if you need to and hold that. Just find what feels good to you. We'll hold here for three more breaths. Mm. This is called Janu Shivshasana A. It's in the Ashtanga primary series. And honestly, although it looks so simple, it's one of my favorites because it just feels so good on my lower back. Inhale as you come up. You're going to walk your hands back. Bring that right knee back up and you're going to cross it over your left leg. Your right foot is going to rest on the outside of your left leg and just take your hand on the outside of your right leg and come in for a twist. Maybe you're supporting behind you with your hand. But here we're just waking up the organs again. Twists are so good for the internal organs. Hmm. Make sure you're lowering that right shoulder if you feel it creeping up toward your ear. Just lower it down. Look over your right shoulder if you can. Uncross that right leg and now we're going to take the left leg and do the same thing. So open up to the left side, 90 degrees. Your left heel is going to be going into your left inner thigh. Your left um, balls of your feet are going to go into the right inner thigh. Open up to the side before you bring that left arm over and you swing it to your right foot. Now while you're here, you should be trying to push back your left hip into the floor as much as possible. The more you push it in while you reach forward in the stretch, the more you'll feel a nice elongation in the lower back. Again, for a little bit more, you can reach on the outside of your right leg. Maybe try to open up for a twist. Or you can stay with your shoulders level here. If you are bending your elbows, try to keep them off of the floor. Inhale, straighten the arms, come up. Make sure you pull that belly in. Now we're going to cross that left foot on the outside of the right leg. Twist, maybe you use the back, your left hand to support you as you twist over to the right, keeping the spine long, shoulders down. Look over the left shoulder. With every inhale in any twist that you have, lengthen the spine, and your exhale brings you a little bit deeper into your, tw your twist. Inhale, come all the way back. And now you're going to inch your way over. Legs straight and long on the mat. And lie down. You can either stay here in Shavasana. I'm gonna get up, but you guys, stay laying down, relax. <laughs> so you can either stay here in Shavasana, which is a resting position for the next two to three to five minutes. 
um, or if you need to go, get up, go get ready for your day. You just stretched out your body. You just got yourself ready for a very energetic, productive day. I hope you enjoyed this yoga flow with me. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your precious time. I hope you have a wonderful morning, noon, day, or night. Namaste. Also, if you liked this video and you like little yoga flows, I do have a couple more. Make sure you check out the playlist in the description. Um, some are long, some are short, some are just fun. But all of them will make you feel very, very good. Okay, so now we'll go. Bye!